Hey, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are making a CBeebies version of a Peter Rabbit, Benjamin and Lily cake. I'm starting off with a six inch round, which you just want to level on the top and split it in half. Using some sugar syrup in this handy squeezy bottle, give each layer a generous coating. This isn't to add more moisture, it's more for replacing the moisture that may be lost over the next day whilst we're working on it. I'll leave the bottle in the description box below. On a 15 inch board, add some ganache off centre to stick your cake to. Layer your cake up with your desired fillings. Now take a board smaller than your cake. This one is a five inch drum. Place it in the centre so it will guide you in cutting an upside down plant pot shape. Start at the top and trim close to the board, making sure to leave the bottom cake as its original size. Work your way around and then remove the top board to reveal your shape. Give it a quick rough coat of ganache to seal the cake in and put it to one side. Next, take another cake that's also six inch round. Split these in half, give it the sugar syrup treatment and then stack and fill on an acrylic board. Start trimming your cake along the top edge to soften it and hack out other parts of the sides. There's no right or wrong to this, just trim pieces out. Then give this a rough coat of ganache to help structure it. It was at this point my mum asked if I'd dropped it. Now back to the plant pot. Give it a final coat of ganache, which is now easier after its first layer. It doesn't wobble as much. Take a scraper and hold it at an angle so it follows the angle of your cake. Scrape the ganache smooth and flatten the top. Once the ganache is set, you can run a knife along the top edge to take off any excess. To make the colour, I first mix Renshaw's orange with Renshaw's brown. Then lighten it with white and a touch of red. Dampen your cake and cover it with your sugar paste. For a more in-depth look on covering, I'll leave the tutorial above. Pop any air bubbles with an acupuncture needle. Using acetate smoothers, sharpen the top edge. Whilst that firms up, we're going to work on the hessian sack. Roll out sausages of spare paste in any colour and attach them to the cake with water. These can be placed totally randomly as they are to create folds and bulges in the sack. Once you've added a few, cover the whole thing in light brown sugar paste. Pay most attention to the sides, don't smooth the top. Next take a ball of paste and push your fingers into it and you've made your own shaped smoother. Smooth around all the dips and bumps. To tuck the paste neatly underneath, just use a scraper and cut off any excess with a scalpel. To texture it, I prefer these bendy texture mats as they allow you to mould to the shape. But crocodile print doesn't really fit the bill. Instead, I have this acetate type mat, which is still a little bendy, but it has sharp edges which can sometimes dig in. It's a small square waffly type of pattern. Press this all over the cake the best you can. Take a Dresden tool and mark in some crease lines. To make the top of the sack, cut a circle from the centre and remove it. Then cut a horizontal line straight through it. Carefully pull back each flap to open it up. Turn the paste over on itself to create a soft edge and shape it to sit open and natural. Add some ganache to the board next to your plant pot and lift the sack into position with a knife. To cover the board around the cake, I've cut out two arcs so they will fit around both cakes. You'll see one fits but the other doesn't, so just trim a bit more off the arc to the one that fits to slide it into position. Trim the excess off the board and then do the same on the back. For any areas that don't quite reach, slide your hand underneath and give it a gentle push. Pushing it from above will leave fingerprints and dents. Smooth the joins together. 
Now that both cakes are in place, trim out a triangle from the front of the plant pot and add in cracks with a Dresden tool. Remove a circle of paste from the top with a small circle cutter. With a Dresden tool, score in lines on the board to look like stone flooring. And texture the stone by running your Dresden tool over it. Feel free to add in some deeper lines as cracks to the stones. Fill the hole on the plant pot with a circle of black paste and also fill in the triangle. This is Renshaw's Black. With an airbrush and black chroma colouring, follow the lines on your board. To have a closer look at airbrushing, I've attached the tutorial in the iCard. If you don't have an airbrush, you can also dust it or paint it. But if you're interested, I'll leave a link to the airbrush I use in the description box below. Also, fill in any deep cracks you made and then spray a little lighter around the edges of each stone and underneath the sack where there would be shadows. Finally, give the stone an overall light coating to enhance the texture you made. Dampen the base of the plant pot ready for trim. This is just a long strip of paste curved round and cut at the triangle. To add detail to the plant pot, I'm using Chroma Brown colour. Just follow around the lip of the plant pot, the edges of the opening, cracks, the top edge and the circle. Also spray the creases and bumps on the sack. Now for Peter. As we're making him quite large, solid paste would be too heavy, so we are going to use a kebab stick, tin foil and masking tape. Sculptors often use tin foil inside their figures as it bulks out the main body which saves on more expensive materials and keeps it more lightweight. You are of course free to make it out of modelling paste or Rice Krispies, but most of my customers want to keep their toppers and tinfoil is going to last longer. You can make yours in whichever medium you wish. I'm not gonna judge. Scrunch up some tinfoil and slide it onto your kebab stick. Firmly squeeze the foil into a basic shape and add on more layers until it's big enough. Once you have your desired size, give the tinfoil a layer of masking tape to hold it all in. Then roll out some pale chestnut colour and cover your body using water to stick. Easily trim off excess with scissors and smooth the joints. Push the stick down into the plant pot and add fur lines with the Dresden tool. For the legs, squash down balls of paste into discs and add them on either side. The feet are little ovals of paste with two slits in to create toes. Add these to the base of the legs and add fur texture. To paint on the lighter patches, I'm using Rainbow Dust Snowdrift Powder mixed with a little water. His famous blue jacket is just a rectangle of sugar paste with each side sloped in at an angle. I'm sure there's an actual name for this shape but I couldn't be bothered to look it up. <laughs> Wrap this around the body, folding the top over into a collar and trimming off any unwanted pieces with scissors. For pockets, cut a small circle of paste in half and stick a semicircle on each side of the jacket. The tops of the pockets are just small strips of paste. His head starts as a ball of paste, slightly pinched in around the top. Press in to mark eye sockets which will also create the bridge of the nose. Run your finger at the base to create a chin and cheeks. Gently pull the cheeks further out to the sides and enhance them by pushing in at the side of the eyes. Shape the bridge of the nose with the soft end of the Dresden tool. Mark in a smile with the sharper end and then the little V shape where his nose will go. Join the mouth with the scalpel and remove the excess paste from inside. Roll out a small tapered sausage of black paste and push it into the gap. Create a small lip by marking it in with the soft end of your Dresden tool. Mark in eyes and push the paste down in the centre to allow the whites of the eyes to go in. 
push these flat and then add a small ball of yellow paste and flatten that out. Followed by the black balls and then tiny white balls for catch lights. Gently slide the head down onto the body. Cut out your number either freehand or by a cutter and stick this to the front of the body with water. In a slightly lighter shade of pink, roll a tiny piece and push it into position on the nose. A tiny white dot of paste goes in his mouth for his teeth. Add his white patches around the mouth and his eyes. The same pink, rolled into a thin string, will go on his lip. His tail is a blob of pale paste which is textured with the Dresden tool. Roll a sausage of blue paste and cut one end flat and the other at an angle for his arms, marking crease lines for the inner elbow. His paws are discs of paste with two slits cut in. Ears are the same colour, rolled into a pointed teardrop and flattened. The inner pink is done in the same way but smaller. Push these together and slightly hollow out the middle with your finger. Trim the base at an angle and insert a cocktail stick into the head to keep his ears upright. To define the eyes, water down some black rainbow dust paint and follow the whites of the eyes. To prepare the radish, roll a ball of white and pinch one end into a point. Make a few of these. I realise this tutorial feels like we are working at turbo speed, but there's a lot to fit in. Make Benjamin Bunny's face in the exact same way, but with a brown nose and eyes. Create Benjamin's neck from a piece of paste and place this into the centre of the sack. Roll out a piece of dark brown in any shape and drape this over to look like a jacket and just trim the excess off. Insert a stick down ready to support the head. Don't forget his patches too. Lily's head is also the same but in pale grey and she also has more pointed eyes at the outer corner and a slightly open mouth. Her feet are done in the same way, ovals with two slits. Stick her head near the base so it's popping out of the plant pot and position her front paws at either side. Also add her ears in the same way, slightly bending the left one. She also has a headband in pink. This is just a strip of paste finished with a pink blossom flower. Benjamin's ears go down the back. Stick these into place with water. This is bottle green Renshaws straight from the packet. Squash a disc shape and place it on his head. Then roll out a chunky sausage and squash it slightly. Wrap this around Benjamin's head for the brim of his hat. Score in some lines with the Dresden tool. For the ear flaps on the hat, squash long triangle shapes. Fill your airbrush with red colouring and spray the bulbous part of the radish, leaving the little wispy ends white. Dampen the top of the sack and place your radish in. Next, layer the name on the board. I just used cutters for mine and I'll leave those in the description box. Add in a radish at the front and one at the back if you have any left. For quick leaves, roll out a long tapered sausage and flatten it between your fingers. Use a Dresden tool to pull out areas of the leaf and score it down the centre. Poke a hole in the top of the radish and insert the pointy end of the leaf, covering any gaps with the fuller part. Oh, almost forgetting Benjamin's hat. Roll out a ball of deep red paste and attach it on top. Create spikes with a small pair of scissors. For soil, I usually use crushed chocolate Oreos, but you can also use regular plain biscuits mixed with cocoa powder like I'm doing here. I've added a teeny amount of water to get some bits to clump together. Spoon this around Lily and around the base of the sack. To finish off, cut out some five petal blossoms from white paste that has Tylo added. 
Use a ball tool to cup the petals and add it to the bumpy foam pad to set a bit. Add a green vine going up the plant pot, just sticking it with water. To make a quick leaf, flatten a teardrop shape, score down the centre and pinch it at the base. Whilst we are waiting for the flowers, add little white dots to the name and age using a white dust mixed with water and a fine paintbrush. You can also give the leaves a little something extra by watering down some black paint and adding it to the centre veins and leafy bits. Once your flowers have set a little, stick them to the vine and add in flattened balls of yellow paste to the centres. And we're done. There was quite a lot to fit in and get through on this one, so I hope it made sense. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider sharing it so I can continue to make more for you. Thanks guys, see you next week.